Good evening, everybody. Hey, Matt, how's it going? Wait for a couple people to come in here. So I'm just waiting for a few people to join in. And then I'll go ahead and get the guys on. I appreciate you coming, so. So, Mike, so bear with me, everybody. I don't uh, generally use StreamYard, so this is kind of the first time really using this in this capacity. So, uh, but I'm excited to have everybody here. Uh, I'm excited to have these guys on. They're all sitting backstage right now, so I'm going to bring them on here momentarily, have them introduce themselves. And then, like I said, I have a series of questions I'm going to ask. Um, and then from there, open it up, hopefully, to some of you guys as well. So hope everybody's doing well. Just a quick update. Um, <clears throat> book's doing well. I'm just checking Kickstarter right now. I think it's about 92% there. So sitting at, just check real quick, about 33,000. So about three grand off. Um, so if you haven't pledged yet, uh, I'd love to have you in there and get this thing funded. I hope to have an answer tonight. I just got my second quote on some slip cases. So it is looking, leaning towards the three different slip cases or at least three slip cases. I'm going to try to do three different ones to make it unique and fun. So, all right. Well, let me go ahead and bring these guys on. Um, I saw some people come, some people go. They're probably confused on what's going on if nobody's in here. So let me bring these guys on and we'll go ahead and get started. And hopefully more people will join. All right. Welcome, everybody. I just was letting everybody know um, kind of where Kickstarter is at right now. And I was mentioning that I was going to bring you guys on. So if you wouldn't mind, maybe we'll go around. I'll, I'll just kind of go by my screen on who's here. But uh, Kurt, you want to introduce yourself to everybody? Yeah. Sure. Hi, Kurt again, original <laughs> brand manager on GI Joe. Frank? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Frank Coronius. Um, G.I. Joe senior designer, um, sole defector of the group, maybe. <laughs> For the personal reasons, you know, and other reasons I can't discuss or disclose at this at this time. Sure you can. <laughs> we know we know what did it. Uh, Kurt. I'm Kurt Groen. I'm I was the uh, senior designer on action figures. Greg. Greg Brunson started on the brand when it was reef born in nineteen eighty. And then I uh, became design director in 1985 to 1994. Dave. Hi, Dave Kunitz. Um, I was a designer to start and then moved up to design manager, um, 84 to 94. And then again, 80, uh, 90, 99 for a while. Uh, <laughs> I had to play with GI Joe a lot. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's a long time, right? 15, 14, 15 ish. What's that? When you were the, when you left, 2014, 15, right? 2012. 2012, okay. Okay. And then, last but not least, Vinny. Uh, I'm bachelor number six, uh, <laughs> and I was the marketing director on GI Joe. And believe it or not, it was from 1990 to 1999. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you guys all coming on. Um, I think a lot of people are looking forward to this. We have a couple people in there, so hopefully some people will continue to join in. Um, so like I mentioned to you guys earlier, I have some questions uh, that I put together. Uh, also, you know, I want to take some questions from people as time goes on throughout uh, this next probably hour, hour and so, hour and a half. Um, so as you guys know, one of the things I'm working on right now is getting these last two books uh, funded. We're close, about 3,000 away. Um, First off, thank you to all of you for all your help, of course, throughout the entire series. And, you know, the last couple of months have been a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of these guys have been 
joining group calls and sharing out different stories. And of course, a lot of times we go off topic, but that's the best part of it, in my opinion. Um, so again, I appreciate you guys all joining in tonight and I guess have things going on outside of here. So, um, so my first question to you guys and whoever wants to answer can answer, but what do you guys most enjoy about the books yourself? I, I can jump in right away. Um, I'm excited to talk about it. Um, the, the biggest thing that I see is for me, it's all the, well, forgotten memories that, um, that pop out in the book, getting to see all the different designers and different participants in the old GI Joe. Um, it's just a thrill to see it back again. Uh, many things I've forgotten and wow, it's, it's pretty cool to see it all in one place. And even some of that stuff yeah. that you recently saw that we hadn't seen for for a long time, right? You said some of those slides. So yeah, yeah, very cool. cool. Stuff that I had completely forgotten about. Lots of fun. I'll echo what Dave just said. Um, I think the 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 biggest thing for me is, uh, and and for the readers, and the biggest thing for me is this actually brings you really back inside Hasbro at the time we were creating things. Um, I saw so many, you know illustrations uh designs paintings i remember almost every single one of them uh the, the thing that strikes me about the new two new books because i've had a preview uh thanks to dan because I, he asked me to edit the copy uh so i have a preview of the, the next two books um i see things in the next two books i've never seen before <laughs> i saw i saw designs and and things that you know were hidden by uh, in the bottom drawers of, I think my, my, the R and D designers. <laughs> and so uh, I was taken by surprise by many of the designs in the final two books, but all in all, um, I think it's just a chance to, for me, like Dave said, to walk down memory lane and to say, wow, you know, have been a part of this was really exciting. Awesome. Thank you. Well, for me, it was just, um, all the information shows how many moving parts that there were yeah we worked with them day to day and um, we interacted with all those folks but when you see it in black and white in the books and you realize part everybody had played in getting the product out onto the shelf really adds new appreciation to um, how the brand came to be we're losing you greg yeah we lost you a little bit but I think, no, I, I that, that connection, I, you're fine. But no, I think it, it, it's true. I think you guys were kind of the golden era of action figures and working on this brand. And I think that's, that's what makes it so special. Mm -hmm. So the, the thing I like about it is that at least on the last few months, as we've been, you know, pulling this book together, it's <laughs> brought us all together, you know, seeing each other and talking to each other after, you know, 30 years, um, which is great. In fact, I'm going to see Greg Bernstein tomorrow night for, for dinner. Huh? Awesome. Awesome. That's cool. That's great. Don't yeah, say where we are. Greg. Is, I'm, I'm actually <laughs> camping in Vinny's backyard right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the reception's so good. You haven't paid me yet. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, you know, what, Vinny, you brought up a great point. Another question I had, I had generated was, you know, although some of you have stayed in touch, I know that many of you have shared that you hadn't talked to each other for plus, you know, 20 plus years. What has this experience been like in getting together um, at the, in going down memory lane? It's so cool because, you know, we were a team. We were very close. We worked a lot of hours together. Uh -huh. um, we saw each other a lot more than we saw spouses or family. Um, you know, we were doing, you know, on certain projects, 10 or 11 hour days, um, getting dinners together, um, working late nights, going in on the weekends to make sure that the project was done and done to our satisfaction. Um, there was there was a lot of time spent with these guys and it, it was not only hard work, but it was a blast as well. Um, became close friends with, well, everybody on this team, uh, on this call. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was fun. Any, any fun stories you guys want to share about certain products, maybe like a big space shuttle per se, or? Well, did, did everybody work on the shuttle that's on this, on this I call? Think I think so. Um, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, 
Great. We we were building models by hand. It wasn't done in 3D on the computer. It was sit at your desk um, and put stuff together. Start from absolute scratch, a flat piece, piece of plastic, and form it into what is the space shuttle, a full-blown model. And everybody had their hand in it. Um, we would go to each other's desks and help out. So it wasn't like a person doing it. It was everybody jumping in and really pitching in. Um, and that was important. Um, and that's kind of rare to allow other designers to work on your stuff. But we didn't have a problem with that. It was welcome. That the fact that things were not drawn out at that time that went to the nth degree. I mean, it was it really was fly by night. I mean, you 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 had a sketch on a pad maybe that showed a, a very vague outline, and it was basically pick a line and build to that line um, in the drawing, and somehow it it all worked. I remember I remember one day. I, I would always go back and look at the work that the the progress that was being made on the shuttle. And at the time, I wasn't even part of the working on G.I. Joe at that time. Um, I was off on Hasbro um, Direct. And I remember Greg grabbing me one afternoon and saying, you got some time to work on, uh, on, on some of the shuttle. You build model airplanes. And he took me to the back room, gave me a couple of slabs of plastic and said, sift through this parts box and take everything home and and figure out what you can do. And uh, I had a hell of a time doing it. And, you know, there were a lot of undercuts, a lot of things that I had to learn. But uh, Greg and the guys in R&D saved my bacon on that one, too. But it was a lot of fun. I mean, like I say, we, we all pitched in. It was a crazy time. Was there any projects in the 90s similar to that, where a lot of people were involved? Like the Battle Wagon, I think, was one, right? But was there any others where a lot of people were involved in that? That was only I, I can't think of one. No. Yeah. Not, not not like the shuttle. Dave. Not like the shuttle. Yeah. Yeah. No. After no, after a while, we hired um, more model makers as opposed to designers doing their own model work. So we would end up drawing the parts and then have work working with the model maker to um, to make sure that it happened the way that you know the designer wanted it. But the model maker had a lot of say in what it looked like as well because they were touching it. Um, drawings didn't work um, necessarily. So, yeah, that, that was absolutely the biggest project that everybody participated in. Um, on a smaller level, everybody was in each other's office helping out, uh, making suggestions. Um, you know, Kurt would come in and tell us, you know, something that he would like for his figures to do. And we would make little accessories for him. Um, or he would do it himself. Uh, but quite often we were building stuff that was in his brain um, just to prove it out. Uh, the only other time it might have gotten a, a little bit hectic was we had designed a, the product line in 88, 89, somewhere around there that um, was using <clears throat> finger flick technology on the missiles. And then all of a sudden, very late in the game, we got permission that we could do spring-loaded weapons uh, that could shoot missiles or projectiles. And that had, and all the vehicles that had anything like that on it had changed. So that was a bit of a scramble. Now, all of a sudden, make these things be able to shoot a projectile in some way, shape, or form and do it and make it so that it would pass all the safety requirements. Yeah, and as part of that, we really wanted to make lots of different kinds of ways projectiles could be um, shot, um, whether it was disc shooting or catapults or um, missile launching through springs or multiple missile um, launches, um, because we felt that if you had all the same, the kid kid would get bored. The, the kid asks for the accessory quite often as opposed to the figure, so I want the one with the disc launcher. I want the one with the missile launcher. Um, that, so we struggled, shouldn't say struggled too hard. Um, we made lots of different methods of launching things. And that was doing mechanisms was fun for me. So for like Kirk and Vinny, was that a challenge in getting vendors to 
you know, accept that? Or is that like the norm at the time? Like many more toys were having those type of mechanisms and, and stuff like that. Was it a challenge at all? No, I mean, it was, it was different. And, you know, you have to remember that at the time, you know, GI Joe action figures were a $1.99 retail, you know? And so yeah. we were always pressed for cost and, you know, the compromise of mechanism versus deco. Um, and um, it's just so funny that it's, 30 years later and the same size figure is like $17 and it's <laughs> the cost hasn't gone up that much. Yeah. Um, but it is, uh, yeah, we, we talked about this before, but I think what we were going through at that time was not just an influx of more action figure brands, but a shift of action figures being really the, the, the forefront of the product line in not vehicles, you know, and, and that was, and you, you hear, you know, collectors talking about their favorite characters, you know, and, and for us at the time, it's like, okay, we had three different assortments. We needed to do so many that were in there. They were basically the cannon fodder for all the vehicles, but all the commercials were really driven mostly off of the vehicles that we did. And that was a shift that was going on um that you can appreciate more now than you did at the time mm -hmm. yeah i think that's always been the debate and i know kirk and i have talked about this like you know, gi joe was a vehicle line initially mm -hmm. you know and, and and the figures were the accessories to the vehicle line and then like you said in the 90s it didn't really switch yeah you know, at that time so yeah. um going to the comments uh victor says hello kirk or law um <laughs> Chad also said for this group of gentlemen who shaped a lot of our childhoods in my entire adult life, thank you for all you did and still do. So if you guys have questions, be sure to shoot them in there and you know, I'll try to mix them in with some of the questions I had uh, you know, preset in here. Can um, I respond to that statement? Sure. Uh, thank you. Um, you created my adult life too um, by paying me. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um so next question i had drawn it down was what does it mean to, to you to have worked on such an iconic brand such as gi joe Anybody? that's a tough one to answer because at the time we didn't we were making toys we weren't we weren't making legends yeah, and true. you know we weren't making icons we were making toys and mm -hmm. you know we were just trying to put out the best possible toy that we could um so you know it's it's tough to i think it's in hindsight we look back and say wow all the things we did um you know i i've been been gathering I, i've always made the claim that you know together we we all wrote the book on how to market action figures and um, i really believe that especially after going through, over the last few weeks doing some research for the dallas show um I've discovered at least 100, uh, 100 things that we did in GI Joe, both from a design point of view and from a marketing point of view, that um, shaped the entire action figure industry. Mm -hmm. uh, that's my belief, and um, and that's just starting from nineteen eighty. You know, when when Greg and I first started working on this brand, um, and then you know what all the other guys in on the screen contributed later on. Um, but if you even go back to 1964, when, you know, I was a kid playing with my first GI Joe, um, uh, the things that this brand did to change the toy industry are just incredible. Uh, mm -hmm. So like I say, I'm, I'm compiling a list. I'll share it with you guys once I get it all done, maybe over the next two weeks. Um, but at least a hundred different things that we did that other toy companies making action figures copied. Mm -hmm. you, you know, for me, it's now having an appreciation of just how much control and power we had in what we did day to day, because many of us have gone on to work for other companies. Um, and we can complain about making the, the dolphin, instead of the killer whale and 
that kind of stuff. And those are great stories to tell, but they were relatively small in the context of all the things that we could do and, you know, and, and we wanted to do. I mean, nobody really got in our way too much, um, but you don't appreciate it when it, when you're in the battle, right? You only appreciate it later when all this time's gone by and we look at it and I, and I compared to what I've been, what I've been doing since then. And I think about, boy, that was, that was so great to have, that control. We just go get together and say, Hey, let's just do this. And, you know, everybody was like, yeah, that would do, or that's stupid. Vinny. Don't, we won't, we won't do that. But it was, it's not the same other places. That was a very unique time in Hasbro's development, certainly in ours. Which kind of leads me into my next question, which Dave kind of answered earlier, like what made the Joe brand team special in your guys' opinion? Definitely the people that worked on it. Everybody was a smart ass. <laughs> no, it's just that everybody was or is still. Brought, well, that, that hasn't changed. Everybody's <laughs> brought a unique skill of talent. And, uh, you know, the, the whole was a lot greater than the sum of its parts. Hmm. Kurt, what were you going to say? Kurt, Kurt? I'd say camaraderie, the fact that, you know, people kept the egos in check in many different ways and that made it a lot of fun and um you know those are the things you you know today i'm still work the same way i did at hasbro with people so it makes it a lot better i want input i want people telling me what they're what they like about things and that comes from you know what we did when we were at hasbro like some people drawing on other people's drawings you know <laughs> that was very common <laughs> And I think a lot of people referenced Hasbro, like Hasbro University, you know, from your era, you know, and many of you were probably one of your first jobs out of college or, you know, um, right? I mean, if, if I recall, for the majority. Yeah, first-ish for me, first-ish. Mm -hmm. Maybe not delivering pizzas, but like a corporate, you know, uh, <laughs> job or something, right? Um, uh, let's see, let me see if there's any questions in here uh, give me a second so zan or zan i'm not sure how you pronounce it but this is a question that they had asked which gi joe figures were based on you each of you if there was one i think everybody he yeah everybody here i think yeah. was. so yeah yeah you, uh, you want to start kurt grown i was big bear the first russian in the line uh, yeah, and, and before we go on, who who is what that was always funny is how many people in the company came up to me. Can you put my face on a GI Joe? <laughs> no, no. Yeah, you said no, no. Say, sure, there's all for a price. <laughs> <laughs> um, that would, but yeah, I was Big Bear. I had a chance to be the first Russian, so something different in the line. I was going to ask you: <laughs> Is there a reason you chose to be a Russian? If you recall, I think we if. Somebody's going to correct me from how I this was, but there was in the comic book the uh, um, brigade with the um, October, October Guard. Guard. Yeah, October Guard. October Guard. Thank you. And I'd always found that since we did in the comic book, you know, I was trying to get the Russians in there. And at that time, I was learning a lot about Russian history, so that's why I just put myself on there. Nothing really too crazy, but it would it had been in the comic. Why not put it in the toy? It made sense to me. Mm -hmm. Frank. Uh, well, my, my name was David Dubosky, which I never understood. Um, my <laughs> mugshot was done, to the, but the figure was Countdown, the astronaut. At least my mugshot was. And uh, I have no idea why I was made into an astronaut. But uh, or And I found out later on that, you know, Dubosky was one of the lawyers from Hasbro. So that might have been a little dig for me for leaving again, you know. But uh, <laughs> I'm good with that. I'm okay. <laughs> and then, uh, cool helmet. Uh, Wild Card's also based on you from Pennington. So if you remember some of their early conceptual designs has your name on some of the artwork. So I don't know if, if that rang a bell. Pennington, All right, yeah. Kirk, Kirk, we probably can kind of figure this out just by your background, but. Uh, <laughs> Law and order. <laughs> did you, did you, uh, I can't remember if you shared this, but is there a reason you, Ron made you into an MP or did you request that or you just did it? Uh, I think, as I said, I believe I was the first Hasbro employee to be made into a figure. And um, 
I was was not working on the brand at the time. I was working on a, a new uh, sub business of Hasbro, the Hasbro Direct business. And one day, Ron walked into my office and with the Polaroid camera and said, I just want to take a few pictures of you. And I said, <laughs> for what? <laughs> and he said, no, nah, it's just it's top secret. And, you know, and Ron was always doing caricatures of people. So I just figured he was going to do a caricature of me. Um, but he took pictures from my front, my side. Uh, I said, get my good side, which he did. And uh, next thing I know, I was being turned into a figure. Now, why I was law and order? Because I was in charge of law and order over these guys. <laughs> um, let's see. Greg? Well, for me, since I had done the, uh, the ball or tank, uh, Ron also decided that I should be the tank driver. So I became, I guess, the character's name was Sherman R. Guderian. And that's my face as the driver for the ball. So um, kind of the mauler. Sorry, I was typing in the chat there. Good day, sorry. Yeah. Am I next? You are next. I was grunting. Um, I was first Thrasher. Um, and Ron came to me and said, I need uh, somebody that's bad and you're going to be bad. Um, so I was the driver of the Thunder Machine. Um, I was a lacrosse player, so I got to make my own lacrosse stick mace. And then he put uh, spiked lacrosse gear on me and uh, and drew up my face and off it went. And then I also became Ozone. Um, and that actually has my name on the back. So that was that was kind of a thrill. The um, The interesting thing about that is I was from Newton, Massachusetts, and so was Vinny. And originally on my card, it said I was from Newton, Massachusetts. And then we put a slash through Vinny's face and put him up there. And he took me away and put me into Three Mile Island instead. So untrue. So David true. David was made a figure years before I was even on the G.I. Joe line. Oh, that was Thrasher. Ozone was so Let's do a little there. fact check on that, Mr. Trump. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Vinny, Go ahead, Vinny. Tell me what you were. So, uh, well, I was, uh, first of all, what is this crap about people thinking like you had any control over what figure you were and did? Because I certainly wasn't. And I was told, you don't get a say. We decide what you're going to be. So, yeah. Be, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> so I hear this like, well, you know, Kirk, did you, you know, did you choose to do that? There was no choosing. There was no choosing. They told you what you were going to be. And it was, it was, you just went along with it. Um, so I got pulled into a room one day when we were working on, uh, you know, uh, Eco Warriors. And, you know, Kurt comes out with this guy and he starts explaining who he is. And then, oh, yeah, and you're, it's going to be you. And the next thing I know, they're taking pictures of me. And the next thing I know, they're, they, they, I had to go, you know, take pictures with Doug and get painted. And then, you know, it came out and they used my full name and where it was from on my card. That, that it's almost surreal. You, how you, were, you were in charge of the back of those cards, so you took my you took my hometown. <laughs> did you ever get much the, older than I am, Dave? That's all. Vinny, did you get the Polaroid with where we painted the uh, slash in your face? Yes. They give that to you? Okay. Yes. <laughs> I had a little fun with that. So, so Matt, it was it, it, it was always a thrill to know that you got immortalized in plastic, no matter who you were or what yeah. you did. I'll live in any trash bin. And, and I don't know if it's true, you know, Greg and Kirk and, and Kurt about this, but if you didn't work – on GI Joe, I'm not sure you were made a figure. Like you had to be connected to it. Yeah, it wasn't yeah, like yeah, somebody could some. come up, you know, and say, "Oh yeah, make me a figure." Not, if you were on My Little Pony, no, not a chance. <laughs> I think some relatives got done, didn't they, Kurt? Look over your back shoulder of Dave Kunitz, and you'll see Lamont Morris on the back wall. And Lamont worked in play school, but he was the one who uh, actually came came up with the double shooter. Ah, okay. He had, so he in one way was tied to it but yeah, yeah he was yeah, that, I, I was always under the impression that you know to get yourself as a figure you had to be related somehow to the brand 
Um, but to get named yeah. to get named a character, we went you know we went deeper than that. We went to uh, a couple of guys from the ad agency. Griffin Bacall, part of the had the names on it. As Frank said, uh, Dave Dubosky was uh, was the character name for Frank, and he was one of our you know corporate lawyers. Um, so I think it you know the the names went you know deeper than uh, the characters that got turned into plastic. What's the best thing you say? Well, oh, like this one, that's my brother. He's on it. And he got his name on the back. So he ended up getting his name on the figure because of that. The mm -hmm. uh, art department was not happy with me because they already had a name taken. But, you know, you can't give somebody a different name than what's on the back of the shirt. So <laughs> smart. <laughs> one of the, one of the things some of you guys might not know is that. Um, <clears throat> Dave had my figure, the tank driver, that he used as a, uh, a voodoo doll of sorts. That um, it was a time when I had a spate of uh, injuries and mishaps, and D Dave would do appropriate damage to the figure <laughs> to illustrate that fact. I still have that somewhere. I'm not sure where, but I think I still have that figure. Yeah. Uh, some of those injuries were to the figure prior to you getting hurt. I don't understand why. <laughs> <laughs> that just Didn't goes to show you the type of plastic that we used. It was that That's magical right. plastic. That's right. Um, yeah, actually, in that figure was a feature that I wanted to actually sell. And that was I put a piece of, uh, I injected bubble wrap with red paint and put that inside the figure and then had little holes in it. So when you stuck something through it, it actually made red paint come out the back. And when you pulled it out, it would drip out the front. And I thought that'd be a great feature for GI Joe, but it was uh, it was not approved by management. And I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Along with the head that had the um, skeleton um, backbone when you pulled the head off, it had the skeleton backbone <laughs> when you pulled it out. That didn't get approved either. Yeah, that was for the predator. <laughs> That, that was. Okay. Oh, it's for uh, Mortal Kombat. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, Vinny, I never worked with you, but I was told that uh, it, it was this one of your, was this inspired by you, or were you the project manager? <laughs> 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 you, you're probably one of the. Frank, are you going to be in Texas? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you about that when I see you. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Don't tell uh, me no, that, that was yeah. so Frank, I've, been, I've been wondering what Vinny reminded me of. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about that the last time, but uh, no, I did not. You'd rather do it publicly than privately. We're all talking together. about figures now. You know. there, there you go. Hey, I got a question. Was anybody made into a 12 inch figure in the line? Or I, I know you did real, uh, you know, real people, but uh, I think Steve Gibry was. Yeah, Steve yeah. Gibry was. Okay. Yeah, there, there were a couple of guys that were done um, when I was working on it back uh, when it was Hasbro Direct. Um, but uh, nobody, nobody would know. Yeah. Um, so there's a question from Matt Noon. He said, I've heard somewhere, it has, somewhere that Hasbro put out a book on how to paint your Joes. Do any of you have anything about it, know anything about this, or have any information on it? No, he might be referring. There was never a book. He might be referring to the newsletter, um, the newsletter, the GI Joe Fan Club newsletter, where um, I instructed kids to to use um, magic markers or sharpies to yeah, decorate their decorate their figures. Um, and I think that's the only that's the only reference we ever made to painting your figures. So Noah, Noah came in here and he's like put, pointing at something. He's like, and then he showed me. Apparently, he's on YouTube now with CN Productions. So he said hello. Oh, okay. Um, as well. Um, so let me go back to some of the questions I had, and I'll get back to some of these guys as well. Um, what was a favorite? What was a favorite figure or vehicle that was done by someone else, and why? So for the the designers. This really goes to you. So maybe a figure design that was done by someone else that you really enjoyed. Don't worry, I'll get to your own as well. Yeah, Bill Young did with the uh, strange cockpit. 
the snow vehicle that nobody could draw. That's my favorite because nobody else can master what he did. At the wolf or something? Wolf? No. Yeah, the wolf. The cover wolf. wolf. Okay. That's and I was going to say it was also a Bill Young vehicle that had the conical shaped wheels, the urban assault vehicle. Yes. I really like um, that, that shape, that look, and uh, how you know how it operated. It was really different. Engineers hated it, but I thought it was really <laughs> cool. The Cobra Rage, right? The Rage, yeah. 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 Yeah, I, Armor Bot by Bill Young. I mean, all of us are picking Bill Young. Um, yeah, Armor Bot by Bill Young. I just thought that was gorgeous. Yeah, it's a cool. Still fight of the Ghost. What was it? The Ghost Rider or the the? You know that that was amazing. You know, yeah. So where's Bill? Who's going to text Bill right now? Tell him to get on here. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, stuff, then. What's that? Yeah, but, uh, you know, then I mean, pick Bill stuff. Yeah. But also, Dave, you know, I had a chance. I was talking to an engineering group a couple of days ago at the Steam Center, and I had three kids in there that are going to study aeronautical engineering. And I mentioned the uh, the space shuttle, you know, and how uh, after the the Challenger had gone down, they think that they would have survived had they had a, an escape hatch, and how Dave had added an escape hatch to the uh, to the shuttle module, you know. And I tell you, man, they were it was really cool to be able to share to share that with those kids and to to share mm -hmm. some of the history about uh, about that. But I. I always thought that was one of those kind of hidden things that a lot of people don't know the line did that really, uh, um, I think are some real hidden gems, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lots of hidden gems in that defiant. Um, so what figure vehicle are you most proud of designing yourself or working on? So everybody can answer this one. Shuttle. I like Mamba too, but Mobat. Mobat. The Mobat. And I could say, you know, the the, the, the air carrier because because I got in the line. And uh, but I think one of my favorites was the Wolverine. Believe it or not. Mm -hmm. mm. For, for me, uh, and this is a little bit. Maybe some people might think this is non-purist, but the uh, uh, the Warhawk plane for Sergeant Savage. Awesome. Yeah, that was incredible. That was a great, you're right, Vinny. That was fantastic. So great. I have one hanging up at the other side of my workshop. <laughs> that is a great, great vehicle. For the figures, I'd say it was uh, Ninja Force, the whole, the whole mm. sort. It was, yeah. it proved you could do actions and figures plus the line was just a lot of fun we were given so much freedom so yeah well and also we were told it couldn't be done yes <laughs> <laughs> who said that engineering or somewhere else engineering originally said that you can't get those mechanisms in that size mm. and that's when that's when we went to work okay yeah so challenges the challenge was there yeah are we going to do the reverse answer yeah, the reverse yeah. of that question now we, we can. We got to wait for Frank now to answer his favorite vehicle. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a tough one. I, I would say probably the, the vehicle that I, I always thought was my favorite was the, the Retaliator helicopter. I gave that to mm -hmm. John Verkey. I had a chance to meet with uh, John Verkey, who was a, an illustrator that lived near me. And uh, I gave that to him and told him that he, you know, in, in kind of honor of his inspiring a lot of us, you know. Uh, but that was one that I just thought it looked really cool. It was one of the first that I'd ever actually drawn, but. Uh, had some kind of cool features, you know, and, and also, you know, plausibility, but not necessarily doability, you know. And that was one of the fun things about, the, you know, the magic of animation. You could take anything, my Condor, you know, plane that splits apart, you know, that uh, would, would probably kill anybody in the plane that would, that would be doing that. Um, but that was one of the cool things about having been in the defense industry where we had very, very, you know, strict constraints and then uh, coming into the toy industry where, we could do anything, you know, it was kind of like I, I had had all the, the harnesses and the shackles taken off of me. And, and that was one of the real beautiful things about Joe is that, you know, they really did the marketing and gave us carte blanche to do pretty much whatever we wanted. And there's so much design done by committee, you know, that uh, I think that's part of the reason we have so many incredible, incredibly uh, innovative and, and, you know, unique vehicles in the line. So. 100%. I mean, think about some of the stuff that was done, like, Twin-tailed helicopters and planes that broke apart, and just 
stuff that couldn't exist in the real world, but yet if you think it could in, in some future military context, well, yeah, we can make this work. And the funniest yeah. part for me was going to an actual military show and, and a major manufacturer was showing me and Guy Cassidy the latest in a tank recovery vehicle. And, it, and this uh, sales guy comes up. He says, well, do you think this would make a good toy? And I go, no, it's boring. <laughs> I, what do you mean it's boring? I said, well, you could have missiles come out over here and this part here could pop up and shoot something. And, and, and he says, wait a minute, wait a minute. And he goes and gets another guy. He says, this is, this is our engineer. Some tell him what you just said. And then when I was done, he turned to me and says, you think we can do that? So that's that kind awesome. of, you know, that kind of imagination that we were allowed to do that couldn't really happen in the real world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so going back to Vinny's uh, comment, it can kind of, it's in, in somewhat it could be the same. Was there a figure vehicle you wish you could have redesigned or done over or to add on to Vinny's, I think comments, what was your least favorite vehicle that you did, did or designed or figure that you maybe worked on? Every vehicle I would love to do over again. I was never satisfied with what we came out with. Is there a specific um, one and why? Pretty, pretty true of any design I've done for anything. There's always something that I'd like to do more to it. It's time and money. Um, you didn't have the time to do it and you didn't have the money to put into it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I would love to play and redo just about everything. Is there um, any, any that stick out specifically? That as, as I don't, there is one that I don't want to redo. Shoot, what is it? Um, and I really don't like it, and I did it. It's the one, I forgot the name of it even. It's the one that opens up. Oh, uh, the Battle uh, Bunker. No. No, I, uh, I know what he means. Yeah, 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 I know the one you mean. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember the name. Um, from the 90s? What's that? Is it from the 90s? Hey, Battle Bunker, not, not Battle Bunker. Yeah, wasn't it, was it green? Mudbuster? No. no, no, no. It's a big, it looks like a helmet, and then you can tip it back. Yeah, yeah. It, it always reminded me of a horseshoe crab. Yeah, yeah. that's the battle oh, bunker. Oh, the Moto Battle Bunker one. Yeah. The Mobile Battle Bunker, I think, is what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll find it. Let's see if I can. That's a cool idea. Oh, it is. Mobile Battle Bunker. You're right. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't okay. know these things. Anyway, I liked the original drawing of it. Um, I hated the way it came out. Well, in fact, I have a collection of everything I've done except for that. If, if, uh, <laughs> if I had one to do over, would be the uh, Battle Ball, the Cobra Pogo. That really should have had some spring legs on it and, and more wires and hoses and stuff draped off of it, whatnot. Otherwise, it, it looked you know, it, it, the premise was goofy, but yet it was sort of in Cobra's camp. Um, but could probably made it a toy. That would have been cool, like, for the Star Brigade to actually put working springs. I mean, I'm sure it would have been costed out. But that would have been kind of neat to add those springs there for that. What is it? The Invader, I think it's called, right? So that would be kind of neat. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So bring, it to, bring one to Dallas, and we'll put some real springs on it if you want to do that. And uh, these guys will work with you on it. Um, anybody else? Kurt? Uh, uh, I, I, I'm, I'll say the one I wish never happened. Right? Successful. Which no. is no. It's Pimp Daddy <laughs> Destro. Okay. That stupid thing was a mistake. It was a joke <laughs> that got in the wrong box. And we made a bunch. Of, and that thing has taken on a life of its own. And then... The marketing people and the designers that came after us somehow thought it was popular because it was rated so high as far as value, but it it, it really it, it it was never intended to be a figure. But since then, now it's a six inch figure and it's a statue and it's taken on a life of its own. And Destro would just never dress like that ever, ever. So I just wish you don't that, that. that off. What'd you yeah. say, Kurt? You don't know that. Yes, I do. 
<laughs> Kurt, Kurt's version maybe. Uh, and that's that's what who who did design that? Who did that, Vinny? Do you recall? Yeah, John Boyce. John Boyce. Okay. He, he didn't really design it. it; was already existing figure. Yeah. He just I did mean, a redeco. The deco yeah. of it. I mean. Okay. How about you? Uh, you guys on top. So Kurt, Frank, or Kurt. Man. My list is way too long. I mean, because <laughs> you know, for me, the one I, yeah, I wish we had made though was the uh, the ex soldiers, the super soldiers. Mm -hmm. uh, we were starting to do some really cool things with the figures, like the crystal figure. We had that uh, CD ROM, the guy with all the ra the blades on him. Yeah, there was some really cool mechanisms. In there that I just needed. I thought that was a lot of fun. Which I do feature in volume 15. I don't know, volume 14, actually. Um, I feature some of those those renderings and some of the stories you share about the mechanism, so people can read about that soon. Those would be kind of different than G.I. Joe, right? But yeah. I mean, totally different than the normal G.I. Joe, but definitely would have been interesting to kind of tie it all in together. Do you guys remember how you guys were going to tie ex-soldiers into G.I. Joe? It, it was very superhero-ish, uh, X-Men-ish. There was things happening in the market at the time, and we were just uh, hopping on the bandwagon there. Um, and it would have been just a, uh, a – it wouldn't replace G.I. Joe. It would have been just a s section that we would do. If it became popular, we would grow it. If it didn't, it would go away. Mm -hmm. right. Would it have been tied in? Because I know it's kind of like a separate segment, kind of like Sergeant Savage, right? Was there going to be ever a tie-in with super soldiers or ex-soldiers with the real American hero? Yeah, that was the whole plan. Yeah. The whole plan, Dan, was, um, and, you know, uh, Dave, Dave said it right. I mean, the whole plan in the early 90s was that I never wanted G.I. Joe to not be part of something that was going on in the marketplace. There was no reason why G.I. Joe should let any other action figure brand do anything to get into the marketplace. We should squash it. Um, and when we heard rumors, for instance, that Star Wars was going to be re -re, you know, re-released and Kenner was going to do the figures, bang, Star Brigade. Kenner never introduced Star Wars or held off introducing Star Wars for several years. Um, when we heard about Jurassic Park and Jurassic Park, and we lost the license to do... You know, we never, well, we actually, we, we, we bid on the license. We never got the license. Um, I said, why should we let Jurassic Park enter the marketplace? Bang, Dino Hunters, what it gets created. Um, so it was just, ex -soldier, uh, Super Soldiers was an, an attempt by us because the hottest figure in the marketplace at that time was X-Men or Marvel superheroes. Mm -hmm. Well, why should we let the marketplace be dominated by another competitor, Toy Biz, we should have our own version of mm -hmm. super soldiers or superheroes as part of G.I. Joe. So that was the whole marketing strategy behind all these sub brands. And if it succeeded, great. If it didn't succeed, one year wonder, move on to something else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we were mm -hmm. never we were never going to be left at the starting gate again uh, by not having us participate in whatever was hot in the marketplace right or wrong that was yeah. that was my overall strategy how about you frank anything you would have redesigned or done over you know probably any vehicle that had uh cruciformed axle posts that were molded into the shell because they snapped off you know i would i would probably redo all those with us with a, a removable polypropylene you know axle that could snap on that would be you know uh, something that would not break but probably the vehicle, you know, that it made the top 10 worst G.I. Joe list and deservedly is the mean dog. Uh, I loved it as a mad, mad dog. But after we had that meeting and I was told we can't use the word mad dog for, for you know, reasons, uh, it became mean dog. And uh, but it, it's just kind of a weird vehicle. Uh, I don't know if I could ever come up with something that weird now, though. So in some ways, it was kind of cool that I had that kind of, you know, craziness back then. I don't, I don't think I would have that. But uh I want to hear more about why you couldn't call it Mad Dog. <laughs> it's because what it spells backwards, you know, could be construed as something because of something. Uh, I won't oh, get into it. Damn. Man. And that's what they said, you know, just we're, we're going to change the name. Uh, so, 
We we had some people who had too much time on their hands. Whoa, <laughs> way too much time. Um, if I could redesign anything, every single female character, starting with Scarlet, ugliest action figure ever developed. <laughs> Second ugliest, Cover Girl. Third ugliest, the Baroness. You want me to keep going on? <laughs> what would you have got, what, what would you redo different today, or what would you have done? We needed today? somebody to sculpt better faces for females, mm -hmm. and we needed to figure out, as they have today, how to give them hairstyles that could be molded. Those those figures, I cannot believe we ever shipped those characters. But Don't hold back, figures, Mark. What are you yeah, really? Those figures <laughs> didn't sell back then anyway, so it didn't matter. Oh uh, jeez. <laughs> And I have one that's worse than that, though, Kurt. Worse than all of them together. Because when I was in Hasbro Direct, we had the 12-inch license for um, Batman and Robin. And that was the movie with um, George Clooney and, and Arnold Schwarzenegger. So we did a 12-inch figure of Poison Ivy, which was Uma Thurman. But the dimensions were wrong on the neck. And it's rotomolded. And so between the design group and Dave was not there. So this, this does not go on him. That's before I got there. Yeah. The design group and the vendor group without talking to anybody else made the call to re up the rotor mold. So that the neck dimension would fit the neck of the existing body. And then what oh, nice. came out from that was affectionately known as pumpkin head um, poison ivy which Uma Thurman got a, sent a letter to DC Comics. And then I got it with a torn out page from uh, that Toy Fair magazine where it was featured in Island of Misfits Toys. <laughs> <laughs> so needless to say, though that, 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 that was not how we did it going forward. They didn't get much better. <laughs> <laughs> the female characters that we did in Hasbro Direct were not the best. Yeah, new stuff, classified stuff, some nice stuff. Beautiful, mm -hmm. yeah. beautiful, nice stuff nowadays. Um, there's a question from Jedi Dan, 2112, about how large were the production runs for the figures at the height of the line's popularity. Hmm. It's probably Kirk and Vinny question. Well, I'm going to guess we were probably running two and a half to three million figures per assortment. Mm -hmm. So wave one, if we had three waves, uh, that would have been a total of eight to nine million figures. Yeah. And then each figure in each wave was weighted differently based on what we believe the popularity of the figure would be based on the design, based on whether they were a good guy or a bad guy, based on whether they were a female or not. And, um, you know, the character weights would 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 be a fraction of, obviously, the three. Call it three million, and there were seven figures or eight figures in an assortment. It, they wouldn't be divided evenly. We'd, we'd, we'd break it up um, uh, in a weighted, well, some kind of weighted version. Right. Um, Duke, for instance, might have been weighted uh, out of a, case of 24 duke might have been eight out of the 24 and then the rest other characters would be weighted less mm -hmm. I, I concur that that's that's at the height it was two and a half to three million per assortment and you know figures would would it wasn't always all new figures every year like with the, the best ones we would we would put in at a lower weighting and constantly look at massaging what the weighting was of those assortments I get a kick out of 24 packs because you can't do a 24 pack of anything now at retail. Everything's got to be a six or a 12 because it's got to be the case and a half pack rule to fit on the shelf. Wow. Uh, let me see if there's a, some other questions. I'll put that up on two packs now. Uh, so here's a good one, kind of in line with the upcoming books. Were there any unproduced G.I. Joe vehicles that you were extremely disappointed that didn't get made? How about you, Frank? I'll start with you, Frank, because I know you I know you have some insight. Yeah, yeah actually, uh, probably the, the one that 
uh, there, there were a couple that I, a few that I was working on, but the, the one was the Grizzly, you know, and the Grizzly was really one that, you know, just like with finger flick technology, when I realized that we were not, you know, unlike producing, you know, military vehicles for, for real human beings that with, with uh, toys, you had, uh, you know, you were creating things that kids would play with. And there were safety issues, you know, one being ingestion with a lot of the projectiles we had, you know, when I did the Condor, you know, the, it had a C-25 had a total of 25 bombs and missiles and, uh, you know, the gravity feed slides, you know, were, were kind of cool. But, uh, you know, in the Grizzly, what I did is I thought, you know, what if what if we had a vehicle that could have a um, uh, munition system, but it, but it was a closed system. So this one actually had a recirculating round in there that would uh, chamber into the to, the to the turret. You could see the uh, the round. It would chamber back into the to the turret, and uh, the idea was was it would be a uh, kind of a mobile munition station. You could do customized rounds, and and that's the one you know that I thought would have been kind of cool because that was taking me in the direction that I was wanting to go in in, in really trying to. To create things that were fun, but also you know safer, for, uh, and not that that's a you know a big thing, but that that was one you know for sure, and and of course you know the the Bushmaster probably uh, from a styling standpoint that was one that I I really that was probably one of my favorite vehicles not produced you know. Mm -hmm. The first one's the Mo Nomad, right? Uh, Nomad was one that I that I did that was never produced. Yeah, that was yeah. that was, was that one you're just describing though. With the, no, the Nomad, was, uh, that was actually based on a vehicle I did in at Cadillac Gage right. that was uh, for a. Oh, you're talking the Grizzlies. Oh, the Grizzly was kind That's one you're that, referring that, to a minute ago, right? Okay. Yeah. I was trying yeah, to pull yeah, it up. His, his Grizzly is not the one that came out for everybody out there. Um, no, I'm I, gonna. I stole that name later on for Sergeant Savage. So here's a. I'm gonna share a picture of it if I can. Well, that's not a good picture of it. Everly stole the Avalanche too, which I, I'm not happy about. So I'm trying. I was trying to find a picture of the Grizzly. For some reason, it's not pulling up on my computer. So I yeah, it. it was kind of a strange. It's a six-wheeled vehicle. Um, had a huge gun that could pull out of it, uh, mm -hmm. but it had a uh, a side gun that that rotated up and down, and there was a kind of a clear turret on it, um, kind of a uh, canopy on it. Green. It was a green rendering. I don't know if I have any pictures of it, but yeah, yeah I, fe I featured a Grizzly, so it's in a previous volume. I just the. Um, the page I tried to pull up, it wasn't pulled up correctly, so I apologize. Um, how about the rest of you guys? Anything that comes to mind? Well, I would say the G.I. Joe train. G.I. Joe train? The train. Yeah, Steve, that, to me, that, that, to me, would have opened up a whole new arena of play had it been made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Steve's toys yeah. said... Uh, He's excited for the GI Joe show in Texas because he's going to bring his 3D uh, model of the train that he based off your unproduced train. So, mm -hmm. Greg, he's hoping he can check show you that in person. Yeah, the the train nice. was a the train was a a missed opportunity, and it was a, a passion project of Greg's. Um, you know, he was getting back into his hobby of of uh, trains at the time, and I walked into his office one day, and and he had it. I mean, just while on display you know this and it was like wow you know and what it was all he did was he took uh, the existing train set from play school the play school preschool train and he just modified an incredible you know gi joe version of it and uh yeah that that was a totally missed opportunity mm -hmm. yeah it was so cool the, the one i i i'm disappointed we didn't do was the original version of the armor bot when it was in military colors because i think that would have been that idea of how to do you know um you know a sort of futuristic version of gi joe uh, i thought that would have would have done better than star brigade did do you, do you remember the um that size armor bot when we first showed it that actually walked yeah that was that was very cool it would have cost a hundred bucks and we thought that was way too much yeah um so but it was it was really cool mm -hmm. um of course it lost the walking feature yeah yeah um the vehicle now that i found the image of it is the <laughs> cobra space shuttle um and i guess you'll get to see that in dan's book mm -hmm. um, but i like the rendering so i guess i wish i had done the vehicle the cobra overshadow is what dave named it so 
that's what he's referring to in volume 15. So check it. I'm excited to show that one out. Because when I saw it, I was blown away. I was like, oh, what the heck is this? And Dave's like, oh, yeah. Totally forgot about that until we mm -hmm. saw it blown up big. And would have been really awesome to have with the Defiant as a Cobra enemy shuttle. So, Dave, I, I thought you would have picked the Cobra La 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 shuttle. Oh, yes. That's my favorite name. <laughs> that always makes me happy when you say that. <laughs> um, no, I like the Scrambler, um, which I worked on. And yeah, it, awesome. that name came out later on a different vehicle. But um, yeah, Scrambler Jet. That's a fun one, too. Yeah. Uh, Kurt Grown. Vehicle? The question? <laughs> figures. Figures. I mean, figures are vehicles. So. Well, obviously, when they said the ex soldiers, but uh, now that, that again, there's just so many. I, yeah, that's tough. Um, because I, I, you know, we were given so much freedom of a lot of these things, too. Um, mm -hmm. it's more into the mechanisms, might it, you know, some of the weird mechanisms we had that we didn't get to put out, but uh, figure wise, yeah, I, that's that's a tough one, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just to call out Kurt for a second, um. He was doing like a figure a day. I mean, so he had like hundreds of ones that we didn't do. Um, for any one character, there were, you know, like 50 drawings. So mm -hmm. I can't imagine even deciding which one you wish you had done. <laughs> Kurt, Kurt, remember. <laughs> Kurt, since you're the only one on the team that transitioned, I won't say defected, but transitioned to Kenner and worked on... Um, G.I. Joe uh, Extreme. Were there any vehicles there that you saw that were any good? Were there any vehicles? Funny guy, go to your room. <laughs> <laughs> it well, it the funny thing about Extreme though, going back to it is because as you said, it is I'm just regret they did not carry over any of the figures to keep the heritage. Yeah. They killed the heritage, and um, because like when we did the G.I. Joe Classic. We actually you know, we went back to the 1960s GI Joe. There's yeah. always heritage. When you take the heritage out of a line, you're going to kill a line. Yeah. And that's you know that was a tough one. And I was right in the front line watching it happen. And uh, just I'll leave it there. <laughs> I'm not bitter at all. Here, here's a good question: Where were because again without the internet and Google and everything else, where were your go-to sources for design ideas? <laughs> The bar. <laughs> <laughs> That's one place. All right. <clears throat> and having said that, all kidding aside, though, but if you said it, I, it was anybody. Kirk might come flying in. Hey, I got an idea, Vinny. Somebody was going to say something that sent somebody down a path that you just couldn't believe sometimes. Boy, does that sound negative? No, ideas, you know, ideas came from everywhere. Um, yeah. you know, there were I remember the R D library had uh popular mechanics, aviation week, um soldier of fortune magazine. Uh, ideas came out from newspapers. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd read a story about something happening in the world of the defense industry bang let's go in frank coronius was there you know bang let's start doing something that you know mimics this so ideas just you know we were never we were never not having ideas i mean the problem we had was making getting them all done <laughs> yeah. you know mm -hmm. we, we never had a lack of ideas no we yeah it, it was the, the amount of vehicles that we were allowed to do um is probably everybody had their space to work in but yet Everybody kind of worked together because, you know, you'd look up against the doorway and, and just through silly conversation or you talk about something else. Hey, what, if, what if we could do that? Or, you know, what if you did that? I'm going to go and make this to you. You know, that mm -hmm. kind of, those kinds of conversations happen a lot. And that's where the ideas kind of came from. Mm -hmm. But But didn't you guys also go to, you know, a bunch of, you know, military um, armament shows, unsupervised by marketing, by the way. But didn't, didn't you do, go down there, just do design guys? Yeah, the AUSA yes. show was just incredible. Yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't know. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, we didn't invite you. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was. It was. I, get, I it actually was, got to go. I went one year with these guys. That was in the good good old days, Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kurt, we liked you. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, it was. Uh, we got to see the you know the the toys that the actual military was using, and they were showing them off to us. Um, we got to try, you know, all sorts of different kinds of, um, I don't know, virtual weapon, weaponry, you know, sit in the, yeah. you know, track airplanes, li, li, you know, in the real vehicles. Um, I got to run a bridge layer, um, got to uh, ride in a tank. Um, we did, uh, at Sigorsky, um, we got to fly their simulator um gosh uh and you know some other proving grounds that we went to uh we had guys going on aircraft carrier we, we went on aircraft carriers mm -hmm. um we were we were all over the place um and then we also had cartoon, cartoons running in the background you know in the afternoons at work um that we sometimes had to watch because uh, that's work for us <laughs> Rusty and I um, went to Farnborough, England one year to watch to see their air show, which happens every other year. I got to sit on inside a Panavia Tornado uh, fighter bomber aircraft if I promised to make the pilot that was demonstrating a G.I. Joe figure. And I did. <laughs> only, only thing was he had a full visored helmet on so you couldn't see his face. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but um, you got to see you got to see some neat stuff. You know, the, the year that I had gone was the year that the Russians first showed the MiG-29 to the West in the air show. And what was what was kind of funny about it is once they did their acrobatics with the airplane, it would taxi to the furthest most point on the runway off the field. And then they'd cover over the canopy with a big canvas thing so spy site satellites couldn't take pictures of the inside of the cockpit wow it was very very protective mm. they put on a heck of a show though <laughs> and then uh mu museums too right you guys would visit some museums and pull some uh reference from there as well right mm -hmm. oh, we yeah. had gone yeah we had gone to uh, natick labs and framingham mm -hmm. mass uh where they do um, the uniform that helm the Kevlar helmets uh the the how they showed us how they do the meals ready to eat um all that stuff which in the early 80s and or even into the uh 1980s was kind of new so they they were happy to show us knowing that um you know we were just a bunch of toy people um here's here's something because uh Dave, you worked on the Road Toad, right? So one of my favorites that no one seems to like to remember is the Road Toad. Love towing ICVs, vamps, and even a, even a slam with it. Well, I'm happy that you liked it. Um, <laughs> it, it. It wasn't one of my favorite vehicles. It was, we were asked to do very small vehicles and some towed weapons um, and given very little money to do it. Um, I'm glad you got to use it. Uh, it it didn't it didn't sell as well as I would have liked. Uh, but that was because a directive came from Kurt Bazigian that said, "Our vehicles have tow hooks, and yet there's nothing to tow with them." Yes, make things. <laughs> so we needed to make things so that you could tow them with the vehicles. There's some good ones though. The the Asp is a great one that you could tow. I mean, that was a favorite that, that of, cool. of Wayne Luther's. You know, yeah, um, that was very cool. That's a fun one. <laughs> Um, let's see. Here's here's a good question. Outside of uh, ex soldiers, we'll use that as a preface. Were there any unproduced subgroups you wish you had wish had been made? Or maybe continued if it was one that was discontinued or very short lived. Yeah. The, I I was fond of the one that was supposed to be all teenagers. Okay. Um, 17, 18 year olds, they were all dressed um, more like contemporary teenagers. Um, that was, that could have been cool, I think. And I think I show something potentially from that, right, in the book. I don't kinda, know. 
thought we yeah. talked about that a little bit. When we started to expand the the Star Brigade to have you know different assortments of you know aliens, the, the one the the I, I still love the illustrations of them is the one where that had um, the characters inside them, and they were basically um, replicators. Mm -hmm. That that to me, I, I wish we we had, we had come out with that. And I'm glad we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you really feel. Uh, I, I didn't like that line of aliens. Like that one. Let me see if I can pull up. I'm trying to pull up a um, page from the book featuring. If it was at the AUSA show, Dave, you would have liked it. Probably would have. If yeah. I'd gone to Area 52. <laughs> <laughs> um here let me see let me share this real quick so i'll give everybody a sneak peek so give me one moment so here's from the book what dave's referring to so the replicators his cobra commander i mean what vinnie is uh referencing Sorry. yeah a beautiful illustrations but i didn't mm -hmm. and dave deforge came up you know some of these preliminary concepts and stuff like that so so one of the pages in volume 14 and then probably for many the first time you're seeing the replicator logo as well um originally called replicants uh, i don't know mm -hmm. if you know that um uh, let's see guys i'm running out of battery and i've got to get up for school in the morning so i'm going to be checking out if i okay. flip i'll stay on as long as my battery lasts okay but if I, awesome. my screen goes dead because my battery is up on the third floor, and I don't feel like running up there to get it. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Um, my charger, I should say. Let's see. So I have a couple questions here. I'll ask it. I think somewhat maybe answered it. But knowing that your designs were never meant to be seen outside of Hasbro, what does it mean to have your have GI Joe fans enjoy the fruits of your labor now in these books? I know Dave shared a little bit about that earlier, but anybody else? I, I think you just well that they get you guys they get to see you know the toy where the toys came from that they grew up with you know that it just wasn't that figure but now you get to see the whole family behind it of uh thought mm -hmm. you know yeah like i said i think i said earlier in one of your books dan that this is the closest the fans are going to ever get to being inside hasbro and inside a uh r d marketing meeting where these ideas would have been presented. I mean, this is like you're actually there looking over our shoulders at what was being created at the time. Mm -hmm. And I think and I, think two, I think the two newest books blew me away because like I said earlier, there are the things in that those two books that I never saw before. Mm -hmm. That was like a, I was totally shocked. Whereas in the other books, um well it, I brought it, I, I was having flashbacks Oh, yeah, I remember when I first saw this. I remember where I was. I remember being in Greg's office. I remember being in Dave's Cube. I remember being, you know, over with Kurt at his drawing board or with Frank, you know, uh, you know, working on a, a model he was building. And then, you know, I remember, you know, Vinny and I walking across the street and, 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 and talking about these kinds of things. And it's like, you know, th that's great. But this the new books with the new with these designs that I've never seen before. You know, just totally shocked me and blew me away. So if if people have not ordered these books, they better get on it right now. One of the things that uh, you know everybody will will learn is that what you saw or what got produced was action actually generated inside the company, and designers learned to grow a thick skin because a lot of what ideas that they had and, and tried to sell uh, were turned out so that um, uh, we always felt we had we had a better factor than other people doing product lines but by the same token we still had you know things that were rejected and you know you, you had to grow that thick skin to, to accept it and move on but then, in some cases a, a good idea that we got reinstituted this at a later time. Mm. I think Greg's yeah, been taken over by the replicators. He's yeah, yeah one thing I was gonna say is I don't know if people realize the uh 
you, you know, I, I feel really privileged that I've known Dan for a long time. And I remember when he was trying to get traction and, uh, you know, this guy called me like he called everybody else and nobody knew who he was. You know, his his idea just seemed uh, incredibly ambitious. Uh, but what you've done, Dan, you know, I, I, I've been teaching. I've been subbing now for about the last seven years, you know, and one, one of the things, you know, I, I sub in history a lot. When you read stuff, you really have people that are that are after the fact, you know, that are that are people's opinions or, or compilations of things that may, might just be, you know, secondhand, thirdhand. What you're doing, what you've done is, is you've directly contacted the people that created the line, and you're you're getting information firsthand. So as far as a reliable source of history and and pop culture, um, what you've done, man, is absolutely incredible. I'm learning a lot. Yeah, you know, I've, I've it's given me incredible. Uh, information and material to be able to, to share with others, you know, that, that I was part of. So that's really uh, very re reassuring. One of the things that, that was uh, th that I really enjoy was all, all the vehicles I did were dedicated to some some other other person, you know, Mean Dog, unfortunately, to my wife, you know, it's got her name encoded in there, you know, not a good name for the, the vehicle for your wife. <laughs> but uh, the avalanche was done for for uh, for, for my um one of my engineers who's no longer with us, uh, the the hammer was done for a guy that was used to work on the on the uh, uh, on the real Hummer, uh, Al Caraba. Uh, uh, one of the the uh, uh, vehicles that I did for a friend of mine, uh, the Condor was for a friend of mine who's a pilot, you know. But some of these people have moved on, and my dad passed away. You know, the, the Raider was to him. You know, PPC three two two nine. You know, that's his birth date and his initials. You know, when I go into his room now, it's kind of it's got all of his war, you know, his college of uh, war college of 73 uh, photograph where Norm Schwarzkopf was in his class and it's got all of his medals around. And then the, the, the Raider sits there, you know, so so for me, even though I didn't get direct feedback from some of the kids, you know, to uh, to have, you know, the, the, the razor back to my brother, you know, these are things that I feel real privileged to have been able to, to have a, a, a chance to create, but also appreciate the fact that Hasbro let us do things like labels where we could actually kind of personalize these to some degree, you know? So that was a real, you know, opportunity, just like with Poopus that, you know, they, they just, they called us music, uh, magicians, you know, it was just a wonderful time to be there. And, and you've captured that you've, you've brought all this stuff alive again, man. And, uh, you know, if nothing else, uh, if you just want to feel what it's like and, and know some of the reasons that maybe the toys didn't turn out the way that they could have turned out, you, you'll, you'll read about that in your book, you know? I appreciate that. And, I, and I'll say this, you know, outside of, you know, I know it's very heavy focused on design and, and art and the stories behind the characters, you know, big thanks to everybody who really walked me through the process, you know, from R&D all the way through the model shop, through the tooling, through the marketing, through the commercials and toy fair. So a lot of, a lot of different hands, you know, outside of even R&D and marketing that were uh helpful in, in creating this series and really like kirk said i try to really walk you down how tours were made back then and i think dave said it earlier you know we didn't we didn't have computers to do this we had to build this thing from scratch and so really they really um recognize the amount of work and time you guys put in this stuff mm -hmm. um, which i appreciate of course um you know, one, one of the things too you got you know this gi joe wasn't like star wars or other toys where you were bringing in a license and you were relying on a licensor to create it we were the licensor we were the creators it was it's the family that we were creating for ourselves mm -hmm. Kurt, you that you hit it and and that that is something people don't oh, oh, and there goes the battery there goes the battery okay and they, who and wants to finish the sentence no nope, there he is yeah, we, we were, we, when I say we, I mean, you guys primarily, right? We're, we're creating the stories, the backstories. The, it, it was such a creative time. And, you know, that's something else that people really don't appreciate today. Today, everything comes from a license. So Hollywood scriptwriter and Hollywood art directors put, the, put everything together. And the toy company just copies that. <laughs> we were doing it. You know, we, we were churning out. A, a, a whole mythology that uh, uh, no one, I think, even to this day, well, except for the fans, the collectors, no one else appreciates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it was true on a lot of our toy lines um, at the time from Hasbro. 
we were proud that we were creating it as opposed to uh, some of the other toy companies that were constantly looking for Hollywood to help them out, um, to design for them. Um, they were recreating and there's a lot of work that's involved in recreating something that already exists, but we started from scratch. We created the story. When we presented a vehicle, we talked about a story of how that vehicle was used in, exactly. in battle, in how it would fight Cobra or how Cobra would be getting back at Joe. Um, it was always a story. And many of those stories ended up in the comic books mm -hmm. or the mm -hmm. cartoons. I, I, I think, think for me, just being an, an observer, it was seeing the look on everybody's face as we were going through, you know, the unproduced items that even though it's got their name on it, they didn't remember mm -hmm. doing it until <laughs> we showed it to them. And then that look was just priceless, just priceless. Mm -hmm. But the other thing, too, is, and this is something I've said before is, to you, Dan, is that we were six months late the moment we started a project. Yeah. You were you were behind the eight ball the whole way, so you, you had to rely on a lot of different groups, different people to get it done, not just, um, not even just the team here, but you had model makers, engineers. The entire team behind it had to be in motion at one time because you, you had a deadline, and that deadline was, un, was really unrealistic sometimes. Yeah. And kind of like i mean i think you guys are touching upon it you know with so many other action figure brands out there why do you think g Edger resonates with people i think you guys are touching upon it that you guys were so involved with it and used your imagination and you had to come up with these ideas and create the stories yourselves would you agree or is there something else that you would say to this question i mean i think that there's many action figure brands that touch people's memories and and nostalgia um, I don't think G.I. Joe sits alone on that. No. It is one of the strongest, but it, you know, there, there's plenty of brands that I know that many have many different fans. Yeah. Um, that being said, yeah, we created that story. Um, we worked hard trying to say what was good and what was bad and trying to put that into our vehicles and figures so that kids sort of knew a, a the, the differences and you know and knowing's half the battle so there you go <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, you, you make a great point with the uh, star wars and Vinny, you're a big transformers fan you know so there's yeah. fans of all genres and um you know but i think gi joe stands out over like some of the brands like maybe like cops or air raiders or visionaries you know still mm -hmm. awesome toys but just they don't have the the following or the the fan yeah. base that Jeff and they has. didn't have the years out the, in the market to true. get the fan base very true um, I, you know i think gi joe you know just going back to its its origin right not just the real american hero but its origin um was always based on real you know the possibility that anybody with the drive and the training could be gi joe here yeah. when when wh one of the things i got the biggest kick out of when i first got to hasbro and sat in on line reviews is when it came time to present the figures there are these beautiful illustrations that kept presented and it was it was sometimes it was um it was uh greg sometimes it was kurt sometimes it was dave but as they got presented they were like well this is you know this is the guy that you know has the bullhorn and in, in does the the hostage negotiations you know and this is the guy you know that that has that that portable rocket launcher like it, it all was very familiar and even here in management argue right like somebody wouldn't get it and, and another person in management would say no no you know you don't understand it. this is the guy that does this that made it all like very reachable and approachable because it talked about things you saw in movies. It talked about things that were, you know, they, everybody made it sound like, oh yeah, of course there's, there's these people that do these different things. And I think that helps it also be that, you know, these characters, could, anybody could be them, you know, yeah. with, with the right training. They didn't have superhero powers, you know, right. they right. could do all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, and with the, you know, realistic, you know, maybe not real, but realistic was our, you know, was our battle cry. 
that you know frank says it it couldn't have been real it couldn't have been but it was realistic it had the um the motors where we feel the motors should have been it had some kind of power system it generally had some kind of storage uh for something in detail um we we always thought about how would this really work um so it was realistic it wasn't real and yeah you could get hurt if you flew that mamba <laughs> <laughs> plausibility plausibility you know the yeah. other thing i think is you know for, for me again you know growing up a military brat and uh, you know my dad was deployed two different times uh, to korea when i was about eight years old to vietnam when i was uh, 12. and uh, we you know i went to high school in the canal zone where we worked on the treaty you know so i was always around military uh, you know people situations and you know i, I think that the heritage and and the the genesis for joe was really based on you know real human GIs, general issue, uh, you know, whatever you want to call them. But there's something very American that I think is important for us to, uh, uh, or that we have a, ch a chance to really highlight through through the line, you know, heroes. You know, May 6th, my, my son's birthday is when last year we had a, a, a terrible shooting here at our, at our Allen Outlet malls. And uh, one of the, the police officers, you know, took down the uh, the person who, who, who shot these people. But these are there's a lot of people out there that are unrecognized heroes, you know, real Americans, mm -hmm. uh, people in the trenches, you know, in some ways, you know, what Dan's doing for us is kind of recognizing some of the creators of this, you know, this fictional line that we had. But uh, but I always felt really proud that uh, we had that real American hero, you know, uh, name, because for me, I remember when I was at the War College, I had a friend whose father uh, was a Medal of Honor recipient. And uh, when he went to the inauguration, they're all invited to the presidential inauguration. I said, get some, you know, get some signatures, autographs from people. And those are the only people I've ever asked for autographs for. And then in 2015, when Clint Romichet was introduced to our, uh, to our group here in, in, in Allen, I asked him for, for, you know, for his signature also, you know, and, and he, he signed it. Uh, uh, Never forget Stephen Mace, you know, one of, one of the guys that was in his red platoon here. But mm. these are people that, that, that this is still going on, you know, we're in Arlington, Texas. This summer, they're going to be building the Medal of Honor, you know, museum. There's a lot of things that are that are, that are really, uh, I think, important for us to get to know because when I'm at with, with the high school and junior high or you know kids that can't even stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance, you know, uh, for them it just doesn't seem cool. You know, it's kind of hurtful for me, but at the same time you can't do anything about it. But I think that if people realize this country, you know, was and still is, you know, uh, built and protected and. Uh, uh, you know, is the place where everybody wants to come because of the, some some of the things that we do and some of the heroes we've had in our history. You know, so. Uh, mm. uh, but but I think whoever, whoever coined that term, that that to me always made me feel good about the line, even though COVID was kind of weird. You know, um, but I always liked the fact that it was really about the hero. You know, mm. I agree. Yeah. Uh, a few, few more questions. Look at Greg. Were you going to say something? Sorry. I don't know if I lost one. A few um, more questions for you guys. One is, this is probably for you, Greg. Are there any features left out of the flag that you wanted to include? Oh, good question. Um, Jeep is like, uh, right now, I can't think of one that probably was at the time whatever it was it escapes me because when the flag was originally designed the deck was supposed to be the, the item that stayed on the ground it had no partial on uh, on the original concept um but um i guess that came about through uh, perhaps a design line review um what what the collector should know is that he had three stages of line review it was with our peers then came to um the company management until we got to the corporate management uh, a lot of that the, the second level included the markers and and um, um art department and and some of the safety and reliability the last review in corporate, where you had uh, the ad agency, 
uh, the the owners, you know, all of that were they were all involved in that. But and and it was through that that uh, the first stage I think made this well. Can't we have a hall beneath this? But uh, yeah, my, when when that comment looked, it made sense that well, Paul could also act as a collection to hold, you know, vehicles like the uh, APC, for example, that uh, it transports people. And then all of a sudden, it opened up that all this whole thing could be one giant um, collector case, four figures, you mm -hmm. know, because uh, it had it had tons of room that you put thousands of figures and marketing loved that because now they could sell more figures right um mm -hmm. initially i don't recall any other feature that i felt was was let out in hindsight would have been nice if we could have had spring-loaded firing on the thing that would have been cool yeah but uh you know like i say i can't think of anything else right now okay. well i know there's a figure that was going to maybe come with it. The flag man was supposed to accompany Cesspool, or not Cesspool, Keel Hall. Uh, geez, Vinny. Uh, I know there's a flag man, which I feature in the book that Ron had designed. It was maybe like it was supposed to come with a flag, like the two figures together. Do you remember that? I remember a drawing where he had uh, one character he had the paddles to direct mm -hmm. the aircraft coming in. Is that who you're yep. referring to? Yeah. That's who I'm referring to. Yep. Yep. Probably got caught out. That, that's what happened there. Yeah, I think that's what you shared. So, um, I would have liked a bathtub big enough for it. <laughs> yeah, I wish it was low. Yeah, it would have been, been nice to. Did, didn't somebody actually make a haul for it and put it in the assignment pool? Didn't I see a video? I think, Dan, you might have even sent it to me. Yeah, I, I think somebody did that. something. Um, maybe like a, pl a clear plastic or plexiglass or something like that underneath i think i saw i don't know if they've ever built the actual hall to allow it to float on its own i don't know but i thought they just had it placed on something mm -hmm. in the pool if it hasn't been done it should be done it should be done get to work come, to, come, to, come to dallas bring your aircraft carrier and these guys will help you uh no I'm just put it in the pool <laughs> <laughs> put it in the pool <laughs> um so here's a question uh let's see some bit from victor real quick Who's your favorite Joe and who's your favorite Cobra? Vinny, let's start with you. Okay. Um, my favorite Joe, um, I think, has to be um, Tunnel Rat because I liked all the camo. Mm -hmm. And I think he looks very realistic. And my favorite um, Cobra, I'd have to say, is... Um, the original, not the original, the second version of Cobra Commander where he had the hood over his head. Okay. Which we won't get into, but yes, they won't allow that to be made nowadays is what I I hear. So how about you, Dave? Why? Um, I don't understand the hood thing, but okay. <laughs> but they'll do, they'll do Pimp Daddy Destro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Again, that's what I've heard. That's the rumor I've heard is that they won't, that they're not allowed to do the hooded um cover commander anymore yeah so i'm it's probably too obvious but uh i mean yeah. the obvious choice is snake eyes um and the reason that i like snake eyes is several times i've heard from kids who are of dif different ethnicities say that's me um with the mask on you know completely hidden it could be anybody and mm -hmm. Because I heard that from kids, I go, that's my favorite guy. Um, in terms of favorite Cobras, um, I think all the Dreadnoughts, I just think they're fun. <laughs> they just had a blast the whole time. So they didn't take themselves too seriously. No. Nah. And plus your one. So, I mean, I you, am to, one. you have to stay with the fam. I get you have, it. Happen to have a little cross stick in your hand. It's pretty cool. It, it is. It is. <laughs> How about you, Greg? Uh, boy, uh, obviously, a Sherman Argadarian is uh, a favorite. Um, the the tank driver. <clears throat> but um, 
I don't know if I have a favorite Joe. One of the favorite cobras that I have is the croc master. I just like the idea of some oh, yeah. guy using a crocodile as his pet. Yep. Yeah, he's a he's a fun one. Yeah. Have you seen the six inch version of that, Drake? Have you ever seen the pictures of that one? I, I have no. I'll say you know what? I'll just send you one. I got some. They actually went on sale at Ross. For like uh, they were originally forty some bucks, at like thirteen dollars or something now. So I'll, I'll send you one. I'll, I'll send you one when I send out the books or something uh, to you. So it's pretty cool. The, well, the actual we'll, crocodile. We'll see, we'll see you in Dallas. And well, yeah, yeah. Months. That's true. Yeah. There you go. I could do that. That's true. That's true. How about you, Frank? Uh, for me, probably uh, I think Arrow Viper probably for the uh, for the Cobra only because that's the only one of the only Cobra vehicles I did. He was the pilot. Um, <clears throat> For GI Joe, probably a, a toss-up between uh, Sergeant Slaughter and and Footloose, because when I was in Detroit and and did a, a, a 16th scale model for the U.S. Marine Corps, I, I found this figure that I, before I even knew that GI Joe was a real thing, it was Footloose, kind of looked like a Marine, you know, and uh, and I bought a few of those, and uh, I always liked that because it just looked like a like a, a little miniature version of the uh, the 12-inch Joe. So those are the those are the ones, yeah. Hurt. Yeah. Um, I'm going to sentimental Vapor because he was the very first figure I ever designed. But um, actually, you don't tell you, do you want to mention your nickname with Vapor? What's that? Do you want to mention your nickname? What, this guy? Yeah. <laughs> That's Bill Young's favorite line. Draw an action figure for uh, Cobra. <laughs> 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 Kurt, I Kurt, I thought you would like Lieutenant Stone. No? Why? <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Which one's Lieutenant Stone? Uh Extreme. What's that? Um, he thinks it's going to extreme, he's saying. Oh God. It, it left your memory, didn't it? You too. Off to your room. All right. Uh, so Vapor and who's your Joe? My, but it, I, it's hard to have a favorite. I mean, I'm just sitting there. It's like when you ask that question, man, is that a loaded one? <laughs> I don't have. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I like Night Viper. He the many, not Night Viper. Um, what's his low light? Many okay. ver all the versions of him. I actually liked him. Snake Eyes, definitely. Num you know, and, and uh, there's all the versions of him too, which is what's really cool. He's one of that translated across version to version to version so well. Uh -huh. Um. Yeah, that's a that's just a tough question. There's just some really cool stuff out there. The killer whale we talked about, it, and it came down. If we'd just been smart enough to call it an orca, we would have gotten it through. If we didn't show it and just did it, that would have been even better. Sure. Here, here. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's really tough to pick a figure. It's just like the vehicles. I mean, you when I was thinking, what would be a favorite vehicle? I mean, there's just so many of them are so fun to play with, really. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it's sort of like trying to pick out your favorite child. You know, that's easy. Yeah. Is My oldest. Child, yeah. That's easy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't have three hundred to choose from there, uh, and they didn't talk back to you, right? Um, well, last question I had was just for you guys. You know, why did why did you entrust me? To share your stories and insight throughout this book series because this is the end of the series uh, i'll put my little ticker on the bottom there if you haven't gotten it but um you know i'm just curious you know why did you, why why didn't trust me to share your stories throughout this book series and i'm honored to be able to capture all your stuff and information the check you sent me okay <laughs> you're the only one that asked that's hush money <laughs> <laughs> And I thought you it was for the lunch he bought me. <laughs> That's coming in Dallas. Gosh, guys. It, it, you were <laughs> persistent without being annoying. Thank you. I'll go with that. <laughs> Big time. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just, I'll agree with that, too. Talking, it was just talking the stuff. Is It was a kick. Um, you remembered more than I did. <laughs> um, fun to hear, hear your thoughts on what GI Joe is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and uh, yeah, you're the only one that asked. So, you know. 
and you had a lot of conspiracy theories that were, that were fun about why we did certain things. And, oh. you know, <laughs> so that's quite an imagination about that. We would put that much effort into some, some of the things that we did. <laughs> hey, just when your, your brain goes that way, you just goes that way. Right. Questions <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, curiosity. I'm just a curious person. Yeah. And sometimes some of those questions were things that you would hear from other collectors too, you know, yeah. that they would say, Oh yeah. Did you know this? And I'm like, and that's what I, I, I am so grateful that you guys, you know, I could just text you at any moment and you always respond quickly. Like, cause somebody will ask me a question like, Hey, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, let's just, let's, let's ask Dave. He worked on that vehicle. Let me just ask him and I'll text Dave. Hey, do you remember this? And Dave will respond quickly. Yes or no, or expand upon it. And that's what, you know, so awesome that when these questions do come up and maybe they just don't really fit into the series, um, I could always reach out to you guys and hopefully I'm not, you're not like, oh, damn it, Dan, what do you want to know now? Uh, but you guys have always been very open and free willing with information. So, Well, Dan, your, your big heart, man, I think that's the thing, you know, you just have, have been have been real since the beginning. You know, we, we know your family. Uh, when you came to Dallas, I know you wanted to spend a lot of time, you know, talking to me about Joe stuff. My mom was dying of cancer and uh, you went to church with me, man. That, that was that was pretty, uh, pretty amazing, you know, and I know you lost your mom and, and uh, you were kind of sharing that with me. And, and, you know, people that's life, man. People go through stuff. And when you have people that, that are part of your family, part of your that's what you become to us, I think, you know, it's. Uh, you're always the first person to wish me some, you know, happy whatever, you know, and that's that's pretty amazing. You know, you're. Uh, you're the epitome of a relational versus a transactional kind of person. And, and that means everything, man. You know, mm -hmm. I appreciate that. I'll right. second that. Yeah. I'll second that. But you, yeah. Same thing. Appreciate that. And I mean, yeah, some of you guys have met, I know, uh, Kurt in Ohio, he's come up a couple of times. He met my sisters and my dad at my sister's house the one time. So, uh, I tried to drag my dad to Rhode Island at one time. Maybe I'll get him. I'm hoping to come up there this summer. So maybe I can get him, convince him to come up. I think like you guys would all get along, you know, with different things from, you know, music and just different, different, that era, you know, um, what are you, what are you saying? Well, nothing. I don't, I don't want to go down the wrong path there, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say how old my dad is. You don't know how old my dad is, but <laughs> But no, I think you guys would get along with him and him with you. So, but, um, well, I appreciate all, all your kind words. I, again, I appreciate all of you, uh, and trusting me, honestly, to share out what you have and putting together the book series as I have, um, and giving insight and giving suggestions. And, um, yeah. I think it's you, Greg, who said like, you know, you had to have a thick skin, right? And so, you know, if there are things that no, this is, doesn't make sense or that's incorrect you know, i try to correct them and, and then you know didn't it impact me negatively or like what the heck why you know why why don't they like this page or i mean i'm always open to making things better so um but again i appreciate all of you i appreciate you guys taking time tonight to come out and chat um you know hope to continue this Vinny and i have talked about this with now that the books are finishing up um you know, kind of getting the podcast back up and running and sharing out, you know, individually interviewing you guys uh, with different types of questions and stuff, but also bringing groups together uh, because it's always fun. I mean, and there's lots of stories. And that's one of the things we'll be focusing on in Dallas. I mean, I'm looking forward to everybody on here tonight being down there. I think it's going to be a great show. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, but that's one of the panels is really showing you talking about the trenches. And so, you know, kind of held off on those questions for tonight for Dallas, but um, it's it's a joy to be part of, you know, uh, this group. And like I shared with you privately, and many, I consider all of you guys friends. Um, and I appreciate you letting me be the kind of the fly on the wall and, and just kind of be part of this, this special group that you guys have made up. So thank you. Hey, it was great seeing everybody here. Um, yeah, same. Always fun. I'm looking forward yeah. to Dallas. Always good. Thank you guys. I'll see Vinny tomorrow. Yeah, you'll see Vinny. Yeah. I heard Vinny's buying first round in Dallas. Is that a rumor? Or is that true? Oh, you know, yeah. that, that is a rumor. That is a, that's another conspiracy theory. 
So be careful. <laughs> I don't know if I made that one up though. Kurt, should I show him the should I show him the uh, text that you sent earlier um, about that? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I had to pick somebody out of the group to throw under the bus. <laughs> well, thank you guys. I know it's late there. Uh, I appreciate you. I hate when it's three hour difference for most of you. So it's always a challenge. Hey, yeah, Dan, how many people are on this on the other side? We can't 24 right now live is wow. what I'm saying. Well, thanks thanks to all of you. Yeah. We can't see yeah. you, but thanks. Yeah, we to can't all of see you for coming and listening to us. Sitting in on this, listening to us jabber. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the questions. Yep. And uh, to this book, man, buy these, buy these last two books, because if you'd ever seen, if you saw Dan in, in his environment and uh, the dedication, the amount of work he's done, man, he is, he is a beast, man. He deserves every, every bit of what he's got, you know, and yeah. uh, look forward to, to seeing the, the doing there. Awesome. Bye. I can't wait. Bye. 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 Come on out to Dallas and get to see us in the flesh and blood. Yeah, yeah. that's right. For sure. And bring your books to get signed, and I'm sure these yeah, we'll, guys will sign them. They'll sign yeah. them. Yep. And um, if you haven't heard, there's a workshop that's going to be happening with vehicles, kind of you know building custom vehicles or modifying current vehicles. So be sure to look into that with the DFW GI Joe show. Yeah. Um, sign up quickly because there's only 30 spots. Yeah, only 30 spots. <laughs> so, and if you do look for the books on Kickstarter. It is tricky how the algorithm is on there. So you'll have to type in G dot I dot space Joe. Um, if you just do GI Joe, it doesn't pick up my books. So it's really strange um, on how it works. Or I'll put the link down here in the comments in a moment as well. Check it out. Again, I appreciate all of you guys. And I'm sure I'll be talking to you way before Dallas. Um, but love you guys. Love ch chatting with you guys. So I will see you all soon. All right. Great. 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 Thank you. All right, everybody. Night. Night. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it. Thank you.